Okay, we are on this explain three section of this credit. We're actually specifically on page 52, and we're going to attach these things that we, we've been learning about arithmetic sequences to actual context. So, uh, question number one, we have here a context of Jerry collecting hats, and the total number of hats in Jerry's collection depends on how many years he has been collecting hats. So, we're told that after the first year, Jerry has 10 hats. So if we take a look at the graph, let's try to figure out how many hats he's increasing by each year. So after the first year, right, after the first year, right, we're at 10 hats. Okay, now after the second year, now we're at 18 hats, which means that from year to year, he has been increasing by 8 hats. And let's see if that's continually true. Yes, in year 3 he has 26, which is 18 plus 8 does equal 26. And then the same thing is true of year 4. 26 plus 8 does equal 34. So um, if we represent that sequence in a table, the first year he has 10 hats. And then the second year he has 8 more, which is 18. The third year he has 8 more than that, which is 26. And lastly fourth year is 34 and, and those values should be the same as the ones in the graph so let's go ahead and find the first term in the common difference first term we can find that right here which is 10 the common difference each time is going to be plus 8 or positive 8 in this case and then let's go ahead and write the explicit rule and again where we do that is we take this general format of a formula and plug in what we just uh, wrote out in step 2 so f of 1, or the first term, is going to be 10. And then the common difference, or the variable d, is going to be 8. So we're going to plug it in the right place, and we're going to get 10 plus 8 times n minus 1. And then we're going to simplify that explicit rule, because we need to first distribute that 8 to both terms. And so we end up with f of n is equal to 10 plus 8n minus 8 and we have like terms here so let's go ahead and add those so if we add those what we end up with and I'm gonna write it here where we're supposed to 8n which is from right there and then 10 minus 8 is gonna give us plus 2 so that is our uh, that is our explicit rule for that particular context let's take a look at question number two Helene paid back a hundred dollars a month one of her college loan each month after that she paid back 50 so the graph shows the sequence, let's write the explicit rule, and so let me zoom in here just so we can see this. Um, so we're told first year she's paid back a hundred dollars, or sorry, first month, and then in the second month she pays 50 more, so now she's paid a total of 150. Uh, month two, she's paying 50 more, which now she's paid 200, so on and so forth. So, so each time she's adding 50 more dollars to her 50 more dollars to her total paid so the common difference there you can already tell is going to be 50. so let's plug that in after so month one she's paid a hundred dollars month two she pays 50 more so now she's paid 150 month three now she's paid 200 month four now she's paid 250. first term is 100 so f of oops f of one is going to equal 100 and then the common difference is going to equal 50. Let's write that explicit rule, which is, remember, f of n is equal to the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. So let's, if we fill in what we just found, f of n is equal to 100 plus, what is that, uh, 50 times n minus 1. Let's distribute that 50. And we get 100, let me, let me be a little bit more complete here, 100 plus 50n minus 50. We have like terms here that we can combine, and the explicit rule that we end up with is 50n plus 50. Okay, uh, let's move on to page 54. So we're going to do more of the same, except in this case, we're starting with the fifth term. So we're going to have to work backwards. 
to find the first term. That's the only little trick here that we have to be aware of. So let's take a look though. What is our common difference? Well, we're increasing by 90 cents each time. So we're increasing by 0. Point, sorry, 90 cents, 9 cents, which is a completely different decimal, 0. 0.09, okay? So what's the common difference? That's question A, well it's 9 cents, not $9, not 90 cents, we want 9 cents. So the correct answer there is C. So let's write the explicit rule for the sequence. And again, it's f of n is equal to the first term um, plus the common difference times uh, n minus 1. OK, so let's take a look. So uh, we can already eliminate choices here based on what we know, right? So C, it looks like the common difference there is it says 90 cents. We're, we're already aware of the fact that it's not supposed to be 90 cents. And then in choice A, we're not given a first term. And unless the first term is 0, uh, we're not given a first term. So it's probably not A. But let's take a look at choice B. We're told that the first term apparently is going to be 5. Let's, let's work backwards to see if that's the case. Right? If, we're at th if we're at the first term where, um, let me make a real table real quick. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so four, three, two, one. So the fifth term was what, 545? So if we subtract nine cents from from that, we're at, what is, what is that, 536? And you can punch this into a calculator and figure that out too. So nine cents less than that is gonna be 527. Uh, nine cents less than that um, is going to be 518. Five cents less than that is going to be uh, 509. So the first term should be 509, it looks like. So we're, let's go with B, right? Uh, moving on, let's see. Choice C. Let's find the cost of using 50 kilowatts of electricity based on based on our knowledge right here based on that equation right there so if we do that even though that's the wrong equation let's continue on with it um, f of n is equal to uh, let's see 9 cents so 0 0.09 times n which is uh, we're trying to find 50 f of 50 right let me rewrite this here this is gonna be f of 50 uh, plus 5. The f of 50 is going to be 0 0.09 times 50, which gives us 450. And then uh, plus 5. And 450 plus 5 ends up being 950, which is choice B right there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Question number 2. Below is a table for the refund value for plastic bottles. Um, and again, we're starting at 5. We want to get all the way down to 1. Okay, so let's see. The common difference there from 25 to 30, the common difference is going to be an increase of 5 cents. So we're increasing by 0 0.05 cents. The common difference is 0 0.05. And so um, let's write the explicit rule. And again, the explicit rule is f of n is equal to the first term plus the common difference, which is zero. So let me see. The common difference is just the variable d n minus one, d times n minus one. So we don't know the first term. We know the fifth term. So let's go backwards. Again, make a table. Fourth term, third term, second term, first term. Fifth term was what? Twenty-five cents. So five cents less than that is twenty. Five cents less than that is fifteen cents. Five cents less than that is ten cents. And the first term is going to be 0 0.05, so 5 cents. So let's write it. Explicit rule is going to be f of n equals the first term, which is 0 0.05, plus the common difference, which is 0 0.05 times n minus 1. And then let's go ahead and simplify that. And if we simplify it, we're going to end up with 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 n minus 0 0.05. And look at that. This and this are going to subtract. So we end up with a very simplified uh, equation for f of n. We're going to end up with f of n is equal to 0.05n. So that is our 
explicit rule. Find the refund value of recycling 100 plastic bottles. Well, let's plug it in. 100. F of 100 equals 0 0.05 times 100. And if we multiply that out, we get $5 to be our answer. The cost of refunding 100 plastic bottles is $5.